sculpture, particularly modern sculpture, you know, is very much about its stance, taking its, taking its stance in the world, its silhouette. And I feel like silhouette is almost the last thing that I'm aware of. For me, the image starts with a puddle in the middle and spreads outwards, or starts at the tip of the nose and slowly is kind of a form of erosion. Because my starting point as a subject was the face. You don't pre-imagine the image you're going to. You set up a relatively simple task and just try to, and try to perform it. In a way, it goes back to almost like a solo wit thing, like the, the will of the artist is, is secondary to the process he initiates. Because I came from a conceptual art background. My dad is, is kind of comes from that. You know, that was his generation's breakthrough. And so I was raised with minimalism, conceptualism, and those, that foundation, it was really interesting to start there and then to say, okay, now I'm gonna draw faces. And it was like coming at it with all these abstract tools and conceptual frameworks and trying to reverse, uh, in a way reverse a historical movement that went from abstraction to a more conceptual, I mean, that went from figuration to abstraction to conceptualization. I, I'm, I'm trying to reverse that, that movement. It's like digging through the rubble of, of all these prior historical movements for, for clues as a way back into that, into that realm. It's like taking an abstract concept and gradually layering with skins, stuffing it with organs, um, sprinkling magic powders on it to try to make it come alive. It's, uh, so that's, that was a real, that's a real interesting, that's felt like, that feels like the historical direction, that it was a ret that would, uh, to be regressive. Almost, at initially it felt like a violent form of regression and sort of, it was almost like, I had to declare like a monastic break from everything I'd been, everything I'd learned beforehand. Sculpture should be conceived in the round. I might be getting three quarter. It feels like every few years I maybe have managed a few degrees in the angle, but mostly it's by multiplying facades that I'm able to do it. When I think of sculpture, I just have the association of dynamic use of space. And in that, in that sense, I don't feel that I've accomplished that. I started with paper, uh, first as a drawing material, started to pulp and tear, and then it became like a skin. And once it had become that way, it was like, well, it was clear that that skin would yield to further pressure. So what was initially a false drawn shadow with a crease or a crumple becomes a real shadow. So you get real shadows and fake shadows operating in the same work. And that basically came out of an inability to bring this thing to life. And a lot of negative energy like this is not good, this is not good, this is not it, this is not it, this is not it, this is not it, this is not it. And then that's, maybe that's it, that's it. You know, until it kind of, you know, cracks and then suddenly, if you're drawing the edge of a, the side of a nose, it starts, the paper starts to bulge <laughs> and then it becomes sculptural. Everything is really just kind of molecular or a set of pulverized minerals. That's the sense that I like to have about the, the matter. That not only is the thing folded, but the piece of paper is made of tiny little particles of wood. I'm really interested in materials that are absorbent, that are sticky. As soon as you touch them, it, le it leaves a fingerprint. Materials that, that are easily wounded, absorb fats, that are, are fats that stick to other things. Yeah. Then I'll usually play one resistant material to that one polished surface that is, that will play off against that, or, or like the sheets of glass. That contrast of the absorbent and the, and the hardness, I dramatize. When I go to present these things that are, come from this soft, constantly permeable, damaged state of becoming, they need one plane, one hard plane, to make their transition into the exhibition space. There's recurrence of kind of an armament, skins, hard skins, extra layers. 
there's a lot of practical reasons for these things, but I do think over repetition viewed at a distance could start to form their own kind of Monaghan iconography. Images of the disaster where, you know, Derrida describes viewing things when you've, when you've had an over perception of structure, it's like the life of a city. It's like, it's like flying low over a city after a disaster. You, you know, once you perceive the structure, you, you, you see it something totally deprived of force. And he, he really uses these images of a, of a disaster that, that is sort of hyper intelligence, hyper, the hyper reflexive had, had sort of eviscerated, eviscerated the subject. I think the color comes from the materiality in that it's not a, it's not a color based on the color spectrum. It's not a rainbow. Um, it's coming from, it comes more from the pigment, pigments, earth pigments, uh, minerals that are heated at different temperatures in the earth under different kinds, under different states of compression. You know, and I feel like those are, every color has an aspect of landscape and maybe of temperature, like even like earth temperature or volcanic temperatures. You know, a color like gold, I mean, it's a color, but it's a material. I've had to go and teach myself many things along the way um, by setting up this sort of this rule that I would not use any found objects and that I would try to do everything myself. It certainly sets, sets you back Someone says, all right, I've got, you know, got a museum room for you. What can you do for me? Um, you know, I'm not using technology to expand. And I, you know, I set, so I make, I make figures, but I've set these sort of limits on it in that I, my figure, the figure of the artist, has to produce that figure himself. I had one, one of the guards at a museum once ask me, why do they always have one, only one arm? And I thought, I hadn't, ever, I hadn't really seen that. I think there is a developing iconography that comes from this reflection of my own body in that I'm left-handed. And as a draftsman, it's basically, this is, this is the draftsman, like just this, section is the, is the machine. So it's an iconography that comes out of a very physical condition. Um, and another, another thing you know, that often happens is that you might put a stick in their hand. Well, that, that has the practical function of you know, being able to hold them up. But the stick is also a line, which is also the extension of the draftsman's. So sometimes when they're holding a stick, it's like they're they're holding a, you know, they're holding a line force. So they're, they're, they're mass, but they're, they're like a lightning bolt or there's some, they're becoming line. So often the figure will, the figure will spin out into line. I rediscovered a sense of awe about what human beings had created. Rediscovering the museums almost as a psychedelic time traveling experience. And I was amazed that I was the same, I could look at the same things that I had seen as an art student that did nothing for me. And I could see them again and I just saw infinite possibilities. I think anytime you're trying to take a thing, a lump of stuff and make it into something else, you're asking some variety of spirit to pass through it. It can, it can be can be swelling out of the ground, or it can be, it could be a very dim, a dim and damaged version of that. It could just be a little bit of residue left over or something. There is some passage. You don't even have to have a real great high metaphysical concept to feel that. You know, I think even the most base gestures still have that, have, have a memory of that. And if you're going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to make art, I'm going to be an artist, you're, you're going to have to face, you're going to have to, if you're violently anti-metaphysical, then, you know, you're going you're gonna to wage that battle there, I think. Uh, and, if you're, and if you're spiritual, really super idealistic, you're going to be disappointed 
by the lumpy mass that you find in your hand at the end of the day.